Now we are through about the people behind the implementation of the National Building Code of the Philippines along with the guidelines for the collection and use of fees. Let us proceed to the succeeding sections of Rule 2, Administration and Enforcement, which I will be tackling. Good day, my name is Nicole G. Beltran and my report comprises of Section 211, Implementing Rules and Regulations Next is Section 212, Administrative Fines Section 213, Penal Provisions Section 214, Dangerous and Ruinous Buildings or Structures Section 215, Abatement of Dangerous Buildings And lastly, Section 216, Other Remedies for the Abatement of Dangerous Buildings and now for the section 211, which is about implementing rules and regulations. So section 211 states that in the implementation of the code and its implementing rules and regulations, the secretary shall first formulate necessary rules and regulations and second adopt design and construction standards and criteria for buildings and other structures. So meaning the secretary has the authority to continuously update the standards as well as the rules and regulations in this code according to new technologies in the construction industry. So the code does not solely rely upon existing technologies. It also adapts over time and when the secretary updates and updates the standards, rules and regulations, then it takes effect after their publication once a week for three consecutive weeks in a newspaper of general circulation. And now let's proceed to section 212, which consists of the administration and enforcement of administrative fines. So for the violation of any of the provisions of this code or any rules and regulations, the secretary or his duly authorized representative may prescribe and impose fines not exceeding 10,000 pesos. Examples of such violations are, sti are stated in the following. So, first is erecting, constructing, altering, repairing, moving, converting, installing, or demolishing a private or public building or structure if without building or demolition permit. Second is making any alteration, addition, conversion, or repair in any building or structure or appurtenances thereto constructed or installed before the adoption of the code, whether public or private, without a permit. Next is an authorized change, modification, or alteration during the construction in the duly submitted plans and specifications on which the building permit is based. So, according to the three cases that I've mentioned, having no permit means the construction of a building is unauthorized, and so administrative fines can be imposed. So, next, non-compliance with the work stoppage order or notice and or orders to effect necessary correction in plans and specifications found defective. Non-compliance with order to demolish building or structure declared to be nuisance, ruinous, or dangerous. So, according to these two cases that I've just mentioned, you can be fined by not complying to an administrative order, whether this is, an, this is a work stoppage order or a demolition order, or it can be any order as long as it is an administrative order. So next case is use or occupancy of a building or structure without certificate of occupancy or use even if constructed under a valid building permit. Next is change in the existing use or occupancy classification of a building or structure or portion thereof without the corresponding certificate of change of use. So meaning lacking in necessary documents is also considered a violation and it can be fined. The next one is failure to post or display the certificate of occup occupancy or use or operation in a conspicuous place on the premises of the building or structure or appurtenances. Next, change in the type of construction of any building or structure 
without an amendatory permit. So, when constructing a building, we, we really have to comply to the National Building Code of the, of the Philippines so that we can avoid paying a fine. And in addition to the imposed penalty, the owner, the owner shall correct or remove his violations of the provisions of the code. So, in the determination of the amount of fines to be imposed, violations shall be classified as follows. So, the amount of fine for light violations is 5,000 pesos and these are the cases that can be considered as light violations. So, letter A, failure to post certificate of occupancy or use or operation. Letter B, failure to post building permit construction information sign. Next is failure to provide or install appropriate safety measures for the protection of workers, inspectors, visitors, immediate neighbors, and pedestrians. The less grave violations amount to 8,000 pesos and the following cases are considered as such. So, letter A, non-compliance with the work stoppage order for the alteration or addition, conversion, repair without permit. Letter B, use or occupancy of building or structure without appropriate certificate of occupancy or use or operation. So, these two cases are um, can be fined by 8,000 pesos. So, next, lastly, the 10,000 pesos is the amount for the grave violations, which can be identified as the following. So, letter A, unauthorized change, modification, or alteration during construction in the duly submitted plans and specifications on which the building permit is based. Letter B, unauthorized change in the type of construction from more fire-resistive to less fire-resistive. Letter C, non-compliance with order to abate or demolish. Letter D, non-compliance with work stoppage order for construction or demolition without permit. And... Next is the change in the existing use or occupancy without certificate of change of occupancy, use, or operation. And the last one is excavations left open without any work being done in the site for more than 120 days. For the penalty, the building official is also authorized to impose a penalty or surcharge in the following cases. So, for constructing, installing, repairing, altering, or causing any change in the occupancy or use of any building or structure or part thereof or appurtenances thereto without any permit, there shall be imposed a surcharge of 100% of the building fees. So, ang surcharge is burasyag ka ng uh, burag charge na i-impose sa building official na burag itap niya sa atong existing na fee. Like, for example, um, you have a surcharge of 100% of the building fees. So, bayaran ni mo ang, ang building fees na dapat ni mo bayaran plus a surcharge of 100% of that building fee. So, bali ma times 2 ang imuhang mabayaran kung 100% of the uh, said fee. So, if wala jud nag-file o building permit at all, then you will have to pay your building permit fee plus a surcharge of 100% of the building permit fees. So, next, when the work in the building or structure is started pending issuance of the building permit by the building official, the amount of the sur surcharge shall be according to the following. So, um, according to the uh, next slide na to siya, so, ang pasabot ani is, if nag-start na ang construction sa building pero wala pa ang building permit, like, nag-issue ka pero pending pa siya, 
then the amount of surcharge will depend on the progress of the construction which are specified on the following image. So this is the image that I'm talking about. So if excavation of the foundations pa lang ang nahimo, then the surcharge will be at 10% of the building permit fees. And kapag construction of foundation, and that includes pile driving and laying of reinforcing bars, then the surcharge will be at 25% of the building permit fees. Next, kapag construction of superstructure up to 2 meters above established grades, above established grade na ang nahimo, so that would be a 50% surcharge of the building permit fees. And lastly, 100% surcharge of the building permit fees for the construction of superstructure above 2 meters. So for the inspection fee, if you fail to pay the annual inspection fee within 30 days from the prescribed date, so a surcharge of 25% of the inspection fee shall be imposed. So now let's proceed to the section 213, which is about the penal provisions, which states that these acts to erect, construct, enlarge, alter, repair, move, improve, remove, convert, demolish, equip, use, occupy, or maintain any building or structure or cause the same to be done contrary to or in violation of any provision of the code. So, if any of that acts, um, the one that I highlighted, are cons so that is considered unlawful when done contrary to or in violation of any provision of the code. So, kailangan, if you will do this act, acts, so you should um, follow the provisions of the code and the implementing rules and regulations. So, if someone violates the provisions of the code and or commit any act that is declared unlawful, they will be punished by a fine of not more than 20,000 pesos or by imprisonment of not more than 2 years or by both such fine and imprisonment. In the case of a corporation firm, partnership, or association, the penalty shall be imposed upon its officials responsible for such violation. So, not all of the members of an association, corporation, or even partnership will be facing the consequences. On only those officials who are responsible or involved in, perform in performing the unlawful acts. If the guilty party is an alien or a person from a foreign country, he shall immediately be deported after the payment of his fine and or service of his sentence pag makulong siya. So, that is all about the penal provisions. So, section 214, dangerous and ruinous buildings or structures. So, what are dangerous buildings? Buildings are dangerous if it is structurally unsafe, meaning na ay mga indication na the building might collapse. Second, if safe egress is not provided. So, egress, by the way, is a path of travel from any point in the building to a public way, which is considered a safe point during a building evacuation. This includes all hallways and staircases on the path to the public way. So, third is when the building constitute a fire hazard. Next is when it is generally dangerous to human life. Next is in relation to existing use, constitute a hazard to safety, health, or public welfare because of inadequate maintenance, dilapidation, obsolescence, or abandonment. And lastly, when the building contributes to the pollution of the site or the community to an intolerable degree. So that is considered dangerous and ruinous buildings or structures.
So section 215 is all about the abatement of dangerous buildings. So when any building or structure is found or declared to be dangerous or ruinous, the building official shall order its repair, vacation, or demolition depending upon the degree of danger to life, health, or safety. But before we proceed to the procedure for the abatement or demolition of dangerous or ruinous buildings or structures, let us first identify the condition or defects that render any building or structure dangerous or ruinous. And these are the following. So the building is considered dangerous or ruinous when first it indicates signs of structural hazards. So there are a lot of indication in which we can say that structural hazards are present in a structure. For instance, whenever any portion of the building is likely to fall, detached or dislodged, or even collapse, whenever structural portions have less resistance to wind or earthquake, whenever any structure has been damaged by fire, earthquake, wind, flood, flood or by any other cause to such an extent, that the structural strength or stability of the structure is materially less than it was before the catastrophe and is less than the minimum requirements of the National Structural Code of the Philippines. So these are just few of the ways in which we can identify a building with structural hazards. So second condition in which a building is considered um, ruinous or dangerous is the existence of fire hazards. So, when the building consists of portions that can cause or fuel fire or explosion, whenever the building is not equipped with fire protective construction or fire extinguishing system, whenever there's insufficient means of exit for emergency evacuation, and lastly, whenever the building violates the fire code of the Philippines. So, now let's proceed to the third condition in is third consider I co third condition is when unsafe electrical wiring is present. So, this is evident in buildings that do not conform to the rules and regulations stated in the Philippine Electrical Code and in buildings that has inadequately maintained and prop improperly used electrical wirings, outlets, devices, and equipment. So these are the indications of a building with unsafe electrical wiring. So the fourth condition, which is the unsafe mechanical installation, happens when the building do not conform to the rules and regulations embodied in the Philippine Mechanical Code, Next is when it consists of inadequately maintained or improperly used mechanical outlets, devices, and equipments. Next is when there is improper operation of required ventilating equipment or air conditioning systems. And lastly, when there is a lack of protection and safety provisions on steam, gas, and fuel supply lines. So, the next one is, an, is inadequate sanitation or plumbing and health facilities in a building so this exists in buildings which consist of sanitation and plumbing system that do not conform to the rules and regulations embodied in the code on on sanitation of the philippines and the Re revised national plumbing code when sanitation and plumbing facilities are improperly used next is when there is an infestation of insects vermin or rodents when there is inadequate garbage storage and disposal facilities and lastly when the building is near a source of pollution so that is considered a building with inadequate sanitation or plumbing and health facilities so the last condition would be the architectural deficiency which exists in buildings that are occupied for purposes other than their intended use when the building is situated in an unauthorized location. Next is when there is an insufficient amount of light and ventilation. 
then when there is um, there is an inadequate sizes of rooms and space dimensions and window openings and lastly when build when the building is dilapidated blighted and unpresentable which are against the generally accepted aesthetic standards so that are that um the six conditions that i've stated are um the factors that we can identify in buildings in which we can say that the building is considered as dangerous ruinous or unwisance nuisance so next so section 216 is for the other remedies or procedure for abatement or demolition of dangerous or ruinous buildings or structures. So, diri na nato mahibalan kung unsang process sa pag-abate or demolish sa isa ka dangerous or ruinous buildings or structures. So, if the building is identified as ruinous or dangerous according to the previous conditions or defects that I've discussed, so, then it is time to di to discuss the procedure um, for abatement or demolition of dangerous ruinous buildings or structures so that it can no longer causes harm to others. So the following is the step-by-step -step procedure for the abatement or demolition of dangerous structures. So there must be a finding or declaration by the building official that the building or structure is a nuisance, ruinous, or dangerous. So, before an abatement is conducted, there must be a finding or declaration from the building official before the abatement is conducted. So, next, when declaration is issued, a written notice or advice is given to the owner and occupants which gives them at least 15 days to vacate or cause to be vacated repaired, renovated, demolished, and removed, as the case may be, the nuisance, ruinous, or dangerous building, or any part or por portion thereof. So, next is within the 15-day period, the owner have a choice to appeal to the secretary, the finding or declaration of the building official, and ask that a reinspection or reinvestigation of the building be made. So next, in case the owner should ask the building official for a reconsideration on his order, same shall be given not more than 15 days within which to render his final decision appealable to the office of the secretary. So next, if the appeal is meritorious, the secretary may des designate a competent representative other than the building official to undertake the reinspection or reinvestigation of the structure. This representative um, so designate shall make or complete his report within the period of 30 days from the date of termination of reinspection or reinvestigation. Next, if after inspection and the finding is the same as the original one, the, sec the secretary, through the building official, shall notify the owner, giving him not more than 15 days from receipt of notice and with a firm finding to vacate or cause to be vacated, and make necessary repair, renovation, demolition, and removal of the subject, building, or parts thereof, as the case may be. So next... If the building official has determined that the building or structure must be repaired or renovated, the order to be issued shall require that all necessary permits therefore be secured and the work be commenced physically with such reasonable time as may be determined by the building official. If the building official has determined that the building must be demolished, the order shall require that the building be vacated within 15 days from the, from the date of receipt of the order, that all required permits be secured, therefore, within the same 15 days from the date of the order, 
and that the demolition be completed within such reasonable time as may be determined by the building official. The decision of the Secretary on the appeal shall be final. So, upon failure of the owner to comply with the order of the building official or of the Secretary in case of appeal to repair, renovate, demolish, and remove the building or structure or any part thereof after 15 days from the date of receipt of the order, the building official shall cause the building to be repaired, renovated, demolished, and removed partly or wholly as the case may be with all expenses, therefore chargeable to the owner. So, if after 15 days, wala pa nag-comply uh, ang owner sa building sa order, then it take over sa building official ang pag-repair, renovate, demolish, and removal sa building, pero ang cost kay i-charge sa tanan sa owner. The building as repaired or in case of demolition, the building materials gathered after the demolition thereof shall be held by the OBO or the office of the building official until full reimbursement of the cost of repair Renovation, demolition, and removal is made by the owner, which in no case shall extend beyond 30 days from the date of completion of the repair, renovation, demolition, and removal. After such period, uh, said building materials of the building thus repaired, renovated, or removed shall be so sold at public auction to satisfy the claim of the OBO. Any amount in the excess of the claim of the government realized from the sale of the building and or building materials shall be derived to the owner. So, di ba, katong mga materials na nag after demolition, ikip to siya sa office of the building official until mabayaran na sa owner ang cost sa pag-repair, pag-renovate, pag-demolish, pag and removal of the building. Kapag nag-exceed na sa 30 days, niya wala pa nabayaran sa owner ang cost, the building materials are then auctioned. Kapag mas dako ang amount na na-receive sa OBO from selling the building materials compared sa cost of repair, renovation, demolition, and removal, then katung sobra is iuli siya sa owner. The procedures, actions, and remedies herein are without prejudice to further action that may be taken by the building official against the owner or occupants of the building found or declared to be nui senses, dangerous, and or ruinous under the provisions of Articles 482 and 694 to 707 of the Civil Code of the Philippines. So, meaning, the procedures that are stated is independent of the actions that may be taken by the building official as stated in the Articles 482 and 694 to 707 of the Civil Code of the Philippines. So that would be all for my report. Thank you so much for listening.